Hello, Jamalov here and welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Dwarf Fortress, a tutorial series where I'm building an example fortress showing how to build a fortress, how to help the dwarf survive. It is now 28th of Timber, the last day of autumn. The caravan arrived about a week ago. I uh, handled the negotiations or the meeting with the diplomat, the outpost liaison, and now my expedition leader, also the broker, is free for trading. So this episode I'll handle the trading and I tell, uh, tell whatever I know about that. One thing here I uh, notice and something I forgot is that I don't see the exact amounts of my wealth. That's because I, uh, when I assigned this uh, dedicated bookkeeper, I forgot to change the precision to highest precision. That's that's something I uh, totally forgot. Once once you get a dedicated bookkeeper who doesn't have anything else to do, you can uh, turn on the highest precision and forget about it. Okay, what with that done. Uh, last time I let my let the caravan into my trade depot, and uh, I created earlier already this uh, safe trade depot design, where the caravan arrives in. I close this bridge, and once they are safely inside, I open this bridge to let my dwarves dwarves into the trade depot. And this can also be used to lock the caravan down if you want to do something nasty with the. Uh, Elves or humans, for example, or dwarves, if you want, because I could claim all these items. Of course, um, not good for the diplomatic relations, but anyway, just telling you it is possible. Okay, how trading is done? Of course, you need the trade depot and you need to <laughs> need the traders to come to it, and then. First thing you need to do is move some goods into the trade depot. The goods here in the stockpiles won't do any good. They need to be here in the depot to be to be traded. So with G, I will move some items here. And here I can scroll through items. I will take my uh, stone crafts here. And they have been stored in bins, which is very important. If you uh, if you create uh, the kind of small items like the crafts, they will be uh, they are much easier to to move into the trade depots because they are in bins. And since I have created toys and instruments, I'm making sure that there are no uh, no bins that uh, uh, won't happen to have any stone crafts in them. And I make sure I have all the toys and instruments. And then I will see if I want. To, uh, if I want to move anything else. Okay, there are some quivers in the bins. I've, I will be trading the individual items, not the bins, but uh, that's another matter. We'll see how that is done soon. Just checking if there's anything else I want to trade. As I mentioned in the previous episode, these uh, these uh, byproducts from the farming, like dwarven syrup, this is actually pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, for trading. I will use V to look into these barrels. I will trade one of these just for example's sake. I will pick some that has most syrup in it. Okay, so I won't trade that with five. I will trade this with uh, with ten syrup in it. And then uh, checking, did I have the time to create some? Some flour. Okay, there's some uh, dwarven sugar here. And some dwarven wheat. Ah, alright. Oh I actually forgot about that. The sweet pods can be milled into sugar. Anyway, these are. Uh, these byproducts of the from the farming industry, wheat flour, sugar, dwarven syrup, these are all good for trading and very good actually, in addition to being being great for cooking. So I'll bring that one dwarven syrup and then I, when I press ESC and unpause the game, the dwarves will uh, take those items and carry them here. The other thing I need to do is to call someone to trade here. 
first of all there's setting here that only broker may trade. If, uh, if for some reason I'd want someone else to trade, I could change this with B so that anyone can trade. I won't do that, I want only broker to trade because he's skilled in it and I want him to uh, gain more skill in it. And then with, we can see who, who is the current broker here and if uh, if he's somewhere that he couldn't access the depots. But anyway, with R, I will ask the trader to come to the depot. And now when I unpause, all that will take place. There's actually the expedition leader slash broker and it is winter. The game is saving because I have those seasonal auto saves on. But, um, Expedition leader will probably stay here in the depot. I will show you one trick that uh, you can ensure he gets there. Because uh, if the if the broker is busy, you can go as far as disabling labors from him. But uh, if I look at the unit list, uh, I see that uh, he's actually now bringing some items there. But if you recall from the burrows, um, video. If I go into W and Burrows, and I had my trade depot in the, <laughs> in the wrong place. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's actually uh, erase that. <laughs> right, okay. So let's make it here. Currently baiting, and there. Now the trade depot Burrow is, uh, is this trade depot. And now I could add citizens into this Burrow with C, and if I chose, choose my uh, broker, who is the expedition leader, uh, this dwarf would be restricted in this bureau. And uh, he would only be able to do things that he can do here. And since the only thing he can do here is trade, uh, I would ensure that he uh, takes care of the trading. And then I would remove this uh, fellow from from this bureau and uh, let him do whatever he wants. This way you don't need to disable the labors and uh, you don't need to uh, do do anything. He will uh, take care of this. But uh, right now he's there so I don't even need to do that. Uh, add him add him into this bureau. But uh, if I needed to, uh, I could. And now all the items are being brought there. And you want to wait for just a little bit. So that uh, so that all the items are brought here. And now um, I started with a dwarf who has appraiser skill. So he's my uh, he, he's my uh, expedition. He's rusty because he hasn't never he has never used that skill. He will be using it now. But because I have the broker with appraiser skill in my status screen, I can see the values. I don't see the exact yet because I had those. I ha didn't have the books on the maximum settings. But anyway, with uh, with the broker I can see these values, and uh, because he has the skill, he'll be he'll be able to tell the prices of the or the values of the items. So now, if with Q, I again go into into here, and because I have a broker here or someone who can trade, the Merchants are here willing to trade. I have the option to trade. If I didn't have any appraiser skill when I go to trade, uh, I wouldn't see these values here. And uh, if that happens, do one trade, just one trade. Pick up some some item you know is cheap, like wood or something, and then pick whatever you have created. Uh, and uh, do one trade and then exit and uh, then the dwarf will gain like dappling appraiser and then you will see at least some values there still the negotiations will be uh, will be tough i need to offer i need to offer much more value to the traders than i take from them in order to uh, get the, get the trade done. So uh, unless you have a legendary appraiser, and even then it might be difficult, don't go for like thousand value from the traders, thousand value from yourself. But uh, anyway, I have the appraiser skill, so I don't need to do that. 
uh, at least at some moments, if you really want to level a brazier's, a brazier's skill, it was possible to do one item at the time that, that might annoy the, the trader. And uh, I'm not sure if that still works leveling the appraiser skill, but I, I won't do I won't do that. But uh, in case you for some reason want to, you might do that. Over the years, the broker will get into very high appraiser skill without any any tricks. So we here you can see that uh, just a single barrel of dwarven syrup with with ten ten um, ten syrup in it, it's worth two thousand two thousand and ten. Uh, Dwarven, dwarven coins, and um, that's that's from um, from a stack of two sweet boards. So farming and the food industry can be very uh, very profitable in far as this uh, trading goes. And uh, lastly, when you are trading with the elves, they will come later if if they have access to your place. Do not trade anything that has wood in it. So with these dwarves, I could here press enter and uh, trade this whole pin. It has everything in it, including the value of the pin. But with, uh, I, I do it normally anyway, I don't trade the pins just to save them. But with elves, uh, you would have to just trade the individual items. I will do that here anyway. This uh, requires requires quite a bit of uh, clicking if you are making a lot of items. It's much easier to just choose the pin. But uh, here we can see that uh, one pin of these obsidian and crafts are easily worth quite a bit. I won't change any, trade any of these quivers or such. Uh, and this uh, this coloring here is uh, these browns, brown colors. These are something I have created. And then the gray ones are something I have found in my map, either from the from anyone who has uh, dropped them, uh, either enemy or, or friend. But these are actually f what I brought with me during the... or the immigrants have brought them. So anyway, choosing, choosing all these... Uh, choosing all these ones here. And I can see how much, how much value are in these items as I pick them. I do need to make sure... Alright, also, if you remember when I created that one artifact, I created the different stockpile for the artifact, so it's not stored in the normal finished good stockpile. But if you have them all in the same stockpile, or you by accident bring it here in the in the trading, uh, unless you are doing it on purpose, you will see it from the insane value it has. Be very careful not to trade the artifact away unless you want to, because that will produce unhappy thoughts for the dwarf who created it, because the artifact is lost. But uh, anyway, okay, so I have about 3000 value here. Uh, with uh, my new appraiser, I can easily go for 1500 value. And the negotiations... Oh, I have the Dwarven Syrup there as well. So 3200. 3, With my uh, new... new um, trader, I can easily go for at least 1500 or 1600 value. And with the Dwarves, I can push a bit more and see, uh, see how it goes. I can also uh, trade just a few items at the time to uh, see how it goes. But uh, I will do this. And also, uh, one last thing, uh, there is an allowed weight. Uh, that's kind of the carrying capacity of the, of the caravan. So if you are trading some very heavy items, or the caravan is small, they might not be able to carry everything you give them. But uh, here, uh, here they, uh, there's still uh, plenty, plenty of uh, allowed weight there. Okay, but what will we trade from them? Uh, I will first see if they have some of the items I really want. So let's see. I'm starting from the from the below. They usually a dwarven caravan brings a whole lot of food. So if you have hard time creating 
creating food in your fortress trade trade for the food this is very very cheap as well i'll uh, see what i will pick later on it is also also good to trade even if you don't like absolutely need the food because the caravan brings a whole variety of different kind of foods so you'll get a variety in the diet of the dwarves and they they like that so it's a uh, it's good that there are a whole lot of different cheeses here because if I was making cheese which I'm not at least not yet that would probably only come from like two or at max two or three different animals but here I can easily get like ten different cheeses making making the dwarves dwarves happy who uh, who get a chance to eat those we have some armor here as well if i if i'd want to and into into any of these items i could press v and take a look at it uh, in more detail to see uh, see what how it's done As said first, first looking through through things I really want, and then uh, then just filling up the value with with whatever. I I don't need these these trade goods like crafts, toys, instruments I've created in the stone crafts. They have no other use than for trading. I don't necessarily need to trade the the syrup, but everything else can go, so I might as well take everything. Um, turtles. Turtles are good. Um, because I can get shells from them. I can also sometimes get some uh, some shells from from the fish. But I will uh, I will get some turtles here just to, just for starters. Because those can be used for uh, used for uh, crafting and sometimes they are required for certain strange moods. There's a whole, a whole lot of stuff here. And then there are prepared meals. I very rarely take these, but uh, again, if you don't have don't have much food, you might might take that. Uh, since I brought one anvil, I don't necessarily need it, but I will in the end probably want to have several several um, anvils. Of course, I can create them myself, but uh, I will get some uh, I will get two iron anvils. Uh, I can drop these in case uh, I want something else from the traders. I could get some bolts, but I don't really need that either. Um, these are usually good for value. The leather pins. With, uh, with just 110 I can get uh, about 10 leathers. And then my leather worker... Now I pressed something else. Ah, okay. I can move baits up and baits down. Accidentally pressed. Yeah, with 110 I can get uh, this many, this many leather. So I, I usually take all the leather. Even if you are hunting and you have a, have a breeding, <laughs> breeding animal industry going, you might want to take the leather. The cloth, uh, that's okay as well, but I only take that if I, if I have some value to spare. But I do take, uh, do take all the cloth. I will take all the sand, because I haven't seen any sand in this map yet, or I haven't paid attention. I will take all the chips in plaster every time, because unless I have found a huge huge vein of chips in my map. I will take the sand. Sand can be turned into, into, into glass, or glass. From these I don't need anything. I could get some dyes here if I want to dye my cloth but I will see if there's anything else here uh, these are not not ordered in any any kind of a smart way so even if even that I saw one chips in plaster here there might be more more here later on so I need to go through the whole list and it's quite easy to miss them as well some sand there There are some seeds here. Rock nuts are good. You will get a whole lot of them as you keep farming. But since you can uh, do things with just the rock nuts, 
if you didn't bring a whole lot of them with you, uh, you might want to take those. They, those can be pressed, pressed into oil and, uh, and stuff like that. So I'll get a couple of bags of them. And also it gives me a bag, which is, uh, which is a bonus. Also, one of the reasons I'm, I'm taking, the, taking the sand, kind of double use for that. More chips and plaster, great. These are, uh, at the moment I have picked only 875 value, so I have plenty of room to go here. Uh, but on the other hand, when I start picking items like steel shields, it's, uh, it goes, goes fast. So basically, I usually first trade for items that I uh, I have trouble creating myself. Um, alcohol, alcohol is so cheap that uh, I usually pick everything I can get. Also, I get uh, get the barrel with it, and the dwarven caravan brings a whole lot of whole lot of this stuff. And uh, since I have mostly so far created wine. It's good that I get some ale and beer and uh, even some uh, even some rum now, so the dwarves will like that. Different kind of booze. There are the animals. Uh, do I want any of the animals? Mm, I do have one reindeer bull already. These are relatively cheap, in uh, in a way. And uh, I could get well. There are two male. Oh crap, it's so cat. Sometimes if you're lucky, you get a male and female of the same same animal and can, can start breeding right there. If this was a reindeer cow, I would uh, I would take it, and then uh, because I have the bull already, I don't need another one. Um, there's very little use in uh, in trading trading trade goods from the traders to your to your fortress so uh, I won't be trading any any trumpets or drums or these instruments uh, unless they are from some special metal that someone would like then uh, then maybe okay here we get to the cheaper items we have some glass here uh, I will trade one clear glass, one green glass. I have, haven't created a kiln yet, so I haven't created any glass. So I will take those just in case some mood wants those. Blocks. These, uh, these traders didn't bring any wood with them. Probably because uh, we are in a forested area and we don't need any. So. Uh, Again, if you know you will need wood from the traders, ask it from the from the liaison, the diplomat. You will get it next year. Usually they bring some here if you are in an area that doesn't have wood. But if you are really unlucky, they don't bring any, and then you then you might be in trouble. Or you just need to find all the all the wood underground. Okay, so value. About 1400. Um, because I have a new trader, I will stay under 2000. You don't want to. Uh, uh, if I push a trade that my trader or broker cannot negotiate, the, he might actually anger the, the, uh, the other trader and then they might refuse trading with us. And I definitely don't want that. I want this trader to be happy. It's also possible that if you uh, you can do one one trade that is really good for the trader, like just take one item from them and then push a little value to their side. And they, because at the moment this trader seems willing to trade, they might actually say something like is uh, is enthusiastic about to trade or is. Uh, Something like that. Anyway, so uh, he's really happy. Um, right now, uh, right now he's kind of a neutral. Um, I will take the metal bars mm, just to have some uh, something, some different kinds of bars, which I don't don't necessarily use for anything, but uh, again for some strange moods. 
So 1600, I can still take something. Also, one one worthwhile thing is that uh, le in the later years, when you are producing a shitload of trade stuff, uh, you can consider uh, taking any kind of metal items from from these traders and then melt those items, even if they don't bring any any items in here. Uh, you will need to melt a whole lot of stuff to get any bars, but uh, you can do it. And uh, at times I have done it when uh, when I'm in a map where I have uh, big big trouble finding any any iron or st iron to uh, make steel. I have taken all the all the iron items, e even some iron toys, toys from the traders, and then melt those in the smelter. Uh, I will take some ropes. Ropes are good. I can create them some myself, but uh, might as well take because they are here. So 1800. Then maybe some, maybe some thread. Just for the, just for the heck of it. Uh, I might take, might take these kind of different kind of barrels. That are uh, just barrels, empty. Always useful. There's some rum. Okay, so 2000. I think this is the trade I want to do. And now when I want to suggest this trade, I can trade. Or if I just choose items from my side, I can offer those items to the mountain homes. And uh, But let's first see this trade. Okay, so that was good. So he's very happy about the trading. So that was... Of course, because he got much more value from it than uh, than I I got from them. So here I have my pins. Now everything has been moved. This uh, offering goods to the mountain homes that has uh, that is important when and if you want to turn your fortress into the mountain home because you need to offer certain value to the mountain homes. Kind of present present you and I drop my pen. Um, you, can, you need to present certain value at the mountain home so that the king or ruler or queen is interested in your fortress and they will eventually come into your fortress. But uh, apart from that, you don't need to offer anything. Um, so uh, yeah, that is the trading done. I can now tell the trader that he is no longer needed. And then whatever items were left here, I will use G. and. Uh, press enter on these so they are no longer needed for trading and the dwarves will come to pick them up. Just like they will come and take everything I traded. The items are still here, the dwarves will come and start carrying that stuff into the into the stockpiles. If I don't have a stockpile for some item, the item will be left in the trade depot. Let's see, the dwarves should get busy. There they come. Start carrying all that stuff. And um, I don't yet have a letter box. I will need to start using that letter I just traded at some moment. And I also need to start creating more more um, more of those cloth bags before I forget. Let's make it eight. You need quite quite many bags bags into those and I also need to start cooking so that those uh, those plants in the bags are used. Uh, the traders will be here, um, these traders, almost the whole season. Not the whole season, but uh, almost like two months or something. And I can still trade with them again. For example, my stone crafter is, is doing, every, doing crafts all the time. I could uh, trade with these guys again, but uh, I'm not going to. Um, but uh, I will keep the depot closed until they announce that they are preparing to leave. 
and uh, then I will open it so that uh, no uh, ambushing goblins come in or anything. And uh, that's it for the trading. It's uh, it's not very hard, but you need that uh, you need that uh, dwarf with appraiser skill to see the values, and then just take take the items into the depot and then trade. And uh, that's it. I have a whole lot of a whole lot of idle dwarves. Um, now I have uh, reached this point. Um, I have a whole lot of I can do a whole lot of building now with so many so many dwarves. And if this trade caravan makes it out safely, they will uh, spread the rumors and uh, tell the stories from this fortress at the mountain homes. And um, whatever value I have created in my in my uh, fortress that will affect the migrant waves in the, in the upcoming year. So uh, because of this, uh, after the caravan has visited, the migrant wave that is coming next might be really big. It's uh, it might be uh, 30, 30 or even 50 or well even more. Uh, at the same time, if you have created a huge amount of wealth on the first year. I haven't done that so much, because the wealth not only attracts migrants, it also attracts enemies. And I haven't, even that I have the traps and the lockdown mechanism in place, I haven't really wanted the goblins to come in yet, because I haven't started training my military. Right, but uh, thanks for watching this, this video. On the next one I will uh, at least start mining this iron from here and start smelting it. And also plan more digging down. I want to find those caverns and uh, go go dig down and eventually find magma there below. So I can start really, really start smelting those irons and start the metal industry. Also, now that the caravan has been here, I will start planning my military. That'll probably take place when the next migrant wave comes in. But uh, before that, I will start building a hospital. And that'll probably be on the next video. Yeah, I think I will look into creating a hospital next. So, thanks for watching this one with the trading. And uh, I'll see you on the next one when we uh, build a hospital and look into the healthcare in general. Take care. Bye-bye.